So I just want to clarify the, the simple version of Mr. Roberts' statement. It's our understanding that the people's commitment is in exchange for Mr. Ferguson pleading as charged to the child abuse in the first degree that the people are committing that there will be no additional charges related to the same set of circumstances brought against him in this case and that the people will not ask for a sentence above the sentencing guidelines in this case, as well as continuing to fully and fairly inform the court of Mr. Ferguson's cooperation. All right. Uh, is that correct, Mr. Roberts? Yes, that's that's what I indicated. All right. Uh, Mr. Ferguson, did you hear the statements that were made by both Mr. Roberts as well as your attorney, Mr. Alden Brady? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand um, the terms of the agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Now, you need to understand, uh, although Mr. Roberts uh, is going to make a sentencing recommendation to the court to stay within guidelines, um, that is not binding upon the court. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, uh, I have not committed to any particular sentence, and I told the attorneys essentially uh, I'm not committing to stay with, even within the guidelines. There's a lot of things I need to see. Uh, in terms of a pre-sentence report and in terms of some information that Mr. Alden Brady in, intends to offer the court. But I want you to understand before we go on with this plea that there is no guarantee uh, that it would be within guidelines. You understand? Yes, Your Honor. Now, the court, uh, if it exceeded guidelines, all the guidelines are advisory. The court would certainly have to put grounds why it was uh, going outside those guidelines. Uh, but again, um, there's no guarantee, you understand. Yes, Your Honor. The honor about July 6 of 2022 in the city of Norton Shores at 4788 Marshall Road in the county of Muskegon and in the state of Michigan, that Paul Ferguson did knowingly or intentionally cause serious physical harm to a child, contrary to Michigan law. This charge is known as child abuse in the first degree. That is a felony. It is punishable by life or any term of years. All right, Mr. Ferguson, did you hear the prosecutor read the felony information? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand the name and the elements of the offense that you face? Yes, Your Honor. You know, the offense you'd be pleading guilty to in count one is called child abuse in the first degree. That is a felony punished by up to life for any term of years. There's no mandatory minimum sentence you must serve. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, as of this charge, you have one of four plea choices versus a no contendory plea. It's commonly called a no contest plea. It's a plea where you choose not to fight the charge for record and sentencing purposes. It operates as a guilty plea. Second, you can plead guilty. Third, you can plead not guilty. And fourth, you can stand mute, which means you would not speak. And I would enter a not guilty plea on your behalf. Do you understand the four pleas? Yes, Your Honor. At sentencing, both you and your attorney will be given a reasonable opportunity to read a pre-sentence report to make additions, corrections, or comments, and the court will pronounce your sentence. Are you prepared to enter a plea at this time? Yes, Your Honor. What is your plea to count one child abuse in the first degree? Guilty, Your Honor. Has anyone promised you anything else beyond the matters recited here today to get you to plead guilty? No, Your Honor. Anyone threaten you to plead guilty? No, Your Honor. It's pleading guilty of your own free choice. Yes, Your Honor. Right, your plea gives up all the rights listed on the advice or rights form that you signed. Uh, those rights include the right to a trial by a jury, the opportunity to do a trial by the court without a jury if you chose, and the prosecutor and the court agreed. You have the right to presume innocent until proven guilty, to have the prosecutor prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you are guilty, to have the witnesses against you appear at the trial, to question the witnesses against you, to have the court order any witnesses you have for your defense to appear at the trial, to remain silent during the trial, to not have that silence used against you, and to testify at the trial if you wish to testify. Do you understand that uh, your guilty plea gives up these rights? Yes, Your Honor. And do you agree to give up those rights? Yes, Your Honor. Your plea gives up any claim that it was a result of a secret promise or a threat that was not disclosed to the court at this plea proceeding. It also gives up the right to claim later that it was not your own choice under the plea. Your plea changes your appellate rights from having the right to appeal to having to seek leave or permission to appeal to the Court of Appeals. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. To the attorneys, are either one of you aware any promises, threats, or inducements regarding the plea other than those already disclosed in the record, Mr. Roberts? No, Your Honor. And Mr. Eldon Brady? No, Your Honor. Mr. Eldon Brady, do you wish to client, uh, question your client regarding the factual basis for the plea? Yes, please, Your Honor. All right, you may proceed. Um, Mr. Ferguson, you heard the uh, information that was read by Mr. Roberts. Yes, Your Honor. And we just need a yes or no answer so it's clear for the record. You heard the information read by Mr. Roberts? Yes. And you heard the address mentioned in that information? Yes, sir. And from the start of 2022, 
until your arrest, uh, did you live at that address? Yes. And did your mother, Shonda Vander Ark, also live at that address? Yes. And did your younger brother, Timothy Ferguson, who was 15 years old at the time, also live at that address with you? Yes. Yes. And at some point during that time period, did Shonda Vander Ark give you instructions um, that you were only supposed to feed Timothy bread with hot sauce and, and no other food? Yes. And did Shonda Vander Ark either instruct or ask you to look after Timothy while she was at work? Yes. Was it your, or did you follow instruction to feed him only bread with hot sauce or plain bread? Yes. And was it your understanding that uh, Ms. Vander Ark was following the same food limitations for Timothy when you were at work and she was there? Yes. And was there uh, approximately three weeks before his death that you realized that that very limited diet was having a serious effect on his health and weight? Yes. And did you commit? Yes. And on that day, she allowed you to feed him an ad additional food. Yes. But after that, she went back to the instruction of only bread with hot sauce and bread. Yes. And did you follow that instruction? Yes. And your understanding was she was still similarly limiting his food intake when you were not present? Yes. Um, the night before your brother Timothy died, did Shonda Vander Ark give you an instruction that you were to put him in the bathtub with water and ice? Yes. And did she give you further instructions about keeping him in the bathtub until she returned from work? Yes. And did you follow those instructions? Yes. Okay, the only question I had, Mr. Ferguson, was um, Timothy under the age of 18? Yes, Your Honor. All right, any additional questions, Mr. Roberts? I believe that's a f sufficient factual basis to establish the plea, Judge. All right. Uh, the defendant offers the court a plea of guilty to the offense of child abuse in the first degree. His testimony establishes that he committed this crime that, well, I should ask you, Mr. Ferguson, this, this home at 4788 Marshall Road, is that in the county of Muskegon, state of Michigan? Yes, Your Honor. So uh, his testimony now establishes that he committed this crime, that he committed this crime in Muskegon County. The court finds the plea to be knowing, voluntary, and accurate, and for all those reasons, the court accepts the plea. For the attorney, says the court comply with MCR 6.302B through D regarding the taking of pleas, Mr. Roberts? Your Honor. Right, and Mr. Eldon Brady. I believe so, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, Mr. Ferguson, do you have any questions about anything we've done here today, sir? No, Your Honor. The court's going to refer the matter to state probation for preparation of a pre-sentence report. Scheduled sentencing for January 29th, 2024 at 8.30 a.m. Uh, bond at this time is uh, revoked. Mr. Uh, Eldon Brady, I know there was some discussion about um, getting a potential assessment on your client, and um, obviously that that's, could take a little bit, especially over the holidays. So if for some reason uh, you need additional time, just let the court know and certainly accommodate that. I do want as much information as I can about your client. Um, so if that will help the court, I want you to be able to time that's needed to do that. Uh, beyond that, anything else for the record, Mr. Roberts? I'm sorry, did you say January 24th? Uh, 29th. 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 Thank you. 29th. That's so, all right. And any other, anything else, Mr. Ellen Brady? No, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. We are adjourned.